Welcome to Weight Loss and Wellness for Real, the podcast where people like you get the practical solutions and support you need to permanently lose the physical and mental weight so you can feel better and live the life you want in the body and mind you want. If you're looking to overcome your stress eating, overeating, binging behaviors, and move to a place of freedom with food and your body, you're in the right place. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here and listening. We are going to get right into today's topic, which is all about navigating through the holidays, which um, we're really in the middle of it, to be honest. But I thought I would get this episode going at least before Christmas and New Year's time to maybe give you some insight into how to make it through this season without putting on any extra pounds, without losing energy, without feeling crappy, because this is often a time many of us tend to really overindulge and then deal with the shame and the guilt of it all after. And I'd love for you, through listening to this, take away just one uh, practical tip that you can employ throughout this time period and through the new year. Uh, or at least through New Year's Eve and into that first week when of January when we typically, you know, try to like get everything back on track. But if you can take one of the practical tips I'm going to talk about today and just employ it right now, like start it right now, you will find that by that first week of January, you are not feeling that need of restriction and restraint and to reel it all back in and the guilt and the shame of what happened over the holidays. And I promise you the practical tips I'm going to give you, they are not very difficult. They are really not very difficult. Okay. So keep listening. And, uh, I'm hoping that this will maybe set you up for the next couple weeks to be just really fun, festive, and not get you into that state of guilt and shame with food. Hey everyone, guess what? I now have an online course you can take called Mindful Eating Mastery, Overcome Binge Eating, Overeating, and Emotional Eating for Good. You're gonna learn all kinds of things through this course, including the two principles you need to know to end binge eating, overeating, and emotional eating. You're gonna learn how to create safety signals for the body, so the urges to binge and overeat are lessened. You're going to learn research-based CBT and ACT strategies to change your thinking patterns that create self-sabotage. You're even going to develop somatic skills to manage emotions without using food. You are going to learn basic skills as well, including things like the amount of protein you need to eat, uh, the time of eating, all kinds of things like that that are really practical in nature. There's a whole bunch of downloadable resources, including research-based journal prompts, worksheets, cheat sheets, a daily planning template, protocols for what to do after a binge, and many more. You have full lifetime access. There are five sections, 12 lessons, and I included a bonus lesson on future you work. So for any of you listening to this right now, which is almost January of 2024, you might really be interested in that future you work bonus section. Uh, You can find this course, probably the easiest way is go to my website, heatherheinen.com. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. And there's a tab right there that says online courses. You just click it and you can get more information. Right now, I am offering it at a lower price. As of February 1st, the price is going to go up. Um, So get in there now and sign up for the course. So many of us during this season really grapple with navigating the holidays in the face of overeating and emotional eating. And while the holidays are synonymous with joy and celebration, they also bring forth stress and challenges that can really trigger overindulgence in food. To truly comprehend the psychology behind these behaviors, I really wanted to talk a little bit about why people tend to overeat during this very festive season. And it often, the season really can stir up a whirlwind of emotion. So it's everything from joy and excitement, but really can lead into lots of stress and loneliness. And many individuals form emotional connections between festive occasions and specific foods. 
and and end up kind of turning to these treats for comfort and even nostalgia. And it's not just about the taste. It's about seeking solace in familiar flavors to cope with the complex emotions that really arise during this time. Um, I know within my therapy practice and my coaching practice that this last, um, I would say, month, uh, six weeks is all at, and at the same time every year. This is exactly the pattern. It always repeats itself. But most of my clients are oh, really have a hard time during this time. Um, I think actually most people do. I mean, there might be a few of you out there who this is just the most joyous occasion ever, and that's wonderful if that is you. But for many of us, um, although there can be joy and excitement, there can also be this real sense of loneliness or if we've lost a loved one, um, this can bring up more grieving during this time. Um, But definitely all the stress of the holidays, if you haven't learned to navigate that yet, that can really cause a lot of um, emotional upheaval. Okay, so let's talk about a couple examples here of overindulging and the stress eating that can go on. So you can picture this here. You're at a holiday gathering surrounded by an array of just decadent dishes, right? You've got pies, cookies, all the savory delights and the festive ambience and the social pressure. They just easily lead to mindless maybe nibbling and indulging beyond your body's actual hunger signals. And and that has a lot to do with just being distracted by everything that's going on and not paying attention. Another scenario um, involves the stress associated with the holiday preparation. So from gift shopping to hosting gatherings, the mounting pressure can really drive individuals to seek comfort in food as a coping mechanism, as a way to deal with all that, to check out, to not feel that stress for a moment. A stressful day might end with a bowl of ice cream or a bag of chips or both, right? Or for me, it would always be cookies, cookies, cookies. So off, this offers that temporary relief, but it really um, paves the way for these unhealthy habits to continue. But also what we always talk about here, creating that guilt and shame cycle. So you know how the next day you're in the guilt guilt and shame about what you did. And now we're in that cycle where then we're going to feel stressed. We're going to feel tension in the body because of that. And and now we're going to most likely go to food again to try to soothe those sensations, to try to soothe those feelings. So understanding the psychological underpinnings is really crucial. But what I really want to talk to you about is the practical tips and solutions that can help you navigate this holiday season with a healthier mindset. Now, these things are not going to solve everything like a light switch, right? This isn't on or off, but you can choose one of these things. And and I will tell you, if you can get consistent with just one of these things during the holiday season, you will get into that first week of January not feeling that heaviness of shame, guilt, regret, and it's just going to help you stay in momentum to keep healthy habits going or creating new ones. It really is going to give you that momentum to keep going into the new year. Okay, so tip number one, um, and this is one I talk about all the time, but to really practice mindful eating. So I don't want you thinking that these practical tips are going to be things like you know, just have one cookie or don't have dessert or, you know, that sort of thing. This has nothing to do with restriction or um, anything like that. It simply has to do with taking the practice of mindful eating and practicing it. That's the whole idea. It's practicing it. So taking a moment to appreciate each bite, savoring the flavors and the textures, um, really getting into the moment with what you've chosen to eat. When, when you practice being mindful in general to food, this approach really helps you tune into your body signals and can really prevent the trap of the mindless overeating, right? Like we were talking about at the social gathering where you may be taking a bite here, taking a bite there. How you would put this into play at a social gathering like that is you would, when you are there, you want to really look and see and make a plan on what you are going to have. So if there's something there that you really, really want, then have that thing. But if there's lots of things there that you're kind of like, eh, I could take it or leave it, just they're off the table. Choose the things you really, really want and then savor and really enjoy them. 
All right, tip number two, plan, plan, plan. So with holiday gatherings often, you know, featuring really an abundance of all the tempting treats, planning your meals and snacks in advance really empowers you to make healthier choices and and really avoid falling into the excess indulgence cycle. And then the shame and the regret and then the overeating and then the emotional eating and then the shame and the regret and on and on. So if during this season, you can really have a plan for what you are going to eat every day, what you are going to drink every day. And I do really recommend writing this down. You can just write, it doesn't need to be tracked. You don't have to do it in an, I mean, you can, you can do it in an app, but you can simply do it in a notebook where you just write down for the day what you are going to have to eat. Now that doesn't mean, you you know me, you got to do a doable plan here. So make sure you include the holiday treats that you're going to have. So, you know, if you know you're making Christmas cookies and, you know, you're going to want some Christmas cookies, make sure you include them on the plan. The idea here is that you might not be perfect with this plan, but it does give you some structure to follow as long as you are making it doable, as long as you are including the things that you want to have. People are like, well, then that doesn't make sense because, you know, I'm going to include 10 cookies or whatever. Okay, that's fine. But my guess is if you plan and write this actually out, you have this plan, you're probably not going to eat all 10. Now you might eat all 10 cookies, but my guess would be the next day you probably won't. Maybe you'll only have eight, you know? So it is sort of a way, um, well, it really almost makes you be mindful, right? So that's the other part of planning. Um But I would really suggest planning your meals, planning your snacks. And uh, if you're going to a place where you don't know what's going to be served, you can write things down like, um, you know, protein, like have your protein, have veggies, get that fiber in there, and then a treat. So you can be general in what you plan. You don't have to be specific, but just to have something written down. Okay, tip number three. This is obviously a biggie, but managing stress effectively, right? So during the holiday season, and by the way, our entire lives, there's always going to be stress. There are always going to be problems. There are always going to be issues that come up and there's always going to be stress that is out of our control. Now, there is some stress that comes our way that is within our control. And if you have control to change things, obviously I would highly recommend that. And often that's what I'm helping people, I'm coaching people through is how to change things with around them so that they can reduce stress. But the other side of the coin is that the stress that we cannot control, that that is the stress we have to learn how to manage, how to how to widen our window, right? How to be able to tolerate more stress so that the stress that's there isn't emotionally affecting us as much. And so exploring alternative ways to kind of cope with holiday stress. So, you know, you know what I'm going to say here, but incorporating mindfulness techniques, deep breathing, prayer, exercises, or just movement of the body. Um, And then also just remembering to engage in activities that bring you joy and relaxation. So if you have hobbies that you're kind of skipping out on because of all the stuff going on around the holidays, maybe try just doing five or 10 minutes of that hobby that you really enjoy just to bring that little bit of joy and relaxation. Obviously, mindfulness techniques can be a great one to implement because you can simply download an app and follow along to a script, a meditation script uh, for five, 10 minutes on a daily basis. And we know that that reduces stress in the body and our minds. Um, The deep breathing protocols, I've talked about quite a few of them throughout this podcast. The biggie, if you're looking for relaxation um, and using a breathing protocol, just remember you're going to always want to double that exhale. So whatever you inhale, double that exhale that offloads the extra CO2 that helps to uh, reduce the response in our nervous system to stress. So all of these things, if you could just pick one, just pick one. So practice mindful eating or planning your meals and snacks or incorporating something to manage stress more effectively on a daily basis, a breathing protocol, a mindfulness activity, or spending five or 10 minutes doing something that brings you joy and relaxation. All right, as we kind of wrap things up, remember that the holidays can indeed be challenging for those of us prone to overeating and emotional eating. 
um, due to the very unique stressors and the emotional, remember that nostalgia connection to food. And so by just acknowledging the psychology behind these behaviors and embracing just even one of the practical tips I gave you, you really can approach this season with mindfulness and resilience. And as that new year starts, really feel freedom in that first week of January versus shame, guilt, and regret. Your well-being matters, especially during the holidays. Until next time, take care, and we will talk soon. Just a reminder that this podcast represents my own opinions. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for educational and informational purposes only. Please consult your doctor or healthcare professional for any individual medical questions you may have. Did you know you can find a lot more help from me on my website? Go to heatherheinen.com. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N and get in touch with questions on all things I offer like online courses for overeating, weight loss, goal attainment, and also my coaching and counseling services.